And we're back on Access Tech Live. I am Stephen Scott. He is Mark Aflalo. And we're joined by Michael Hainsworth. Michael, i got to dive into some of the stuff that you're doing. Where's My Jetpack is a web series that has that incredible motto, which is the technology we were promised, what we're actually got, and what's coming next. Tell me about the series and how this all came to be, because it's a super interesting premise. I, I It was weird because um, my speakers bureau decided to label me a futurist. And... <laughs> Any journalist worth their salt will roll their eyes at the idea of being called a futurist. But they're like, no, no, pe people love this. Lean into it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to lean into this because as a kid, I was always fascinated by this. You know, you, you talk about the uh, the, the Jetsons um, was perhaps my earliest example of that. You know, we were promised robot butlers, courtesy of shows like the Jetsons and, and all of that, you know, 1950s, 60s, jet age type stuff. We were promised flying cars. We were promised food in pill form. And I know we don't want to get into it, but that's the only one I'm genuinely disappointed we didn't get. But I'm fascinated by the idea that there's a future that we don't know. We can only guess as to what it is. You look at predictions from 1901 about what 2001 will look like, and they all assumed we'd be uh, using uh, inflatable balloons to walk on water because the uh, inflatable balloon was a, a, a new concept to them. So I'm always really curious about how we think about the future based upon what we know in the present and just how wrong it often uh, is. So that was sort of the, the idea behind where's my jetpack? Where is it? I was promised one. I didn't get one. And every time someone will send me a video of some guy with a jetpack and I'm like, that's not the jetpack and you damn well know it. I'm looking <laughs> for a rocketeer jetpack. That's yep. the real, this thing with it's, it's attached to your arms and you use that for the thrust and all that. That's not a jetpack. Come on. Do, is there anything particular, technologically speaking, or if you look back that, you know, knowing what you know today, knowing what, what was being developed today that you look at and say, this should be here now. What is the holdup on this? I would say flying cars would be a perfect example okay. of that. Uh, but the reality is, is that you don't want a flying car today. And the reason why you don't want a flying car today and why we don't have them is they're incredibly dangerous. And, and you know, you've been stuck behind a guy on the highway who's got his left blinker going on perma blink for the last, you know, six or seven miles. Um, you can't trust that person with a flying car because they haven't even figured out the X, Y axis, let alone a Z axis. So a flying car will come, but that flying car is going to have to be autonomous. And before we can do autonomous flying cars, we need to sort of figure out the autonomous regular car thing. And, you know, whether or not you want to argue that Elon Musk has figured that out, to which I would strongly suggest he has not, we're not going to see flying cars until we figure out the XY axis. Ironically, most planes that we've been on in the last 10 to 20 years have been self flying planes as well. The pilots exist for when there's a problem, not to get the plane up or down. So we're kind of already there. But we have this one problem that is preventing us from getting to that level, and it's compute power. Um, a lot of the compute power that's going to be necessary for autonomous vehicles isn't necessarily going to be on the vehicle itself. It's going to be in the cloud, on edge clouds. Cloud devices, servers that are basically where the transmitter tower is, and they're distributed so that as you move along the road or you fly along the sky, that they will bounce from tower to tower and hand off the brains of the operation to that physical machine, whether it be a car or a plane. That is coming through 5G and 6G. 5G and 6G wireless technologies have such a low latency between the point at which you ask for information and you get it back to the vehicle or vice versa that it will allow us to provide virtually real-time reactions to things. So that's kind of next. So I still think things like flying cars are coming. Maybe we should have had them already if we had put the effort into it by now, but it's one of those things that I'm keeping an eye on. You know, it's always interesting when you talk about innovation. I think here on Access Tech Live, of course, our show is all about innovation, but also the intersectionality of disability and technology. And I think that personally, my experience is that Disabled people are often at the forefront of a lot of innovation, perhaps don't realize it, but we are because of our needs, because of whatever it is that we require. And oftentimes 
innovations that come as a result of disability actually enable everybody. They, they work in the mainstream. I think about you know, electronic sliding doors or the electric toothbrush, for example, all devices that were built for accessibility purposes but became mainstream. Do you find that? 100%. Uh, this device that I'm holding in my hand, the Apple iPhone 15 Pro, would not be possible if it wasn't for the advances that were expressly designed for the disabled community. And I'm talking about Siri as a perfect example. Uh, speech to text, text to speech. These were originally enabling technologies for those who could not either speak or hear. Uh, those are the types of technologies that we're talking about. Um, touch screen technologies were originally developed because some people can't type and all they can do is point and that's what we need to help them with. I had a very interesting conversation about this with uh, the legendary science fiction author Cory Doctorow sitting in his uh, Burbank, California living room and him pointing out that Michael at some point every single one of us will be disabled to one degree or another. I spent 11 years in radio, my hearing's going. So speech to text, that's gonna be helpful. Text to speech, that's gonna be helpful. But closed captioning, that will be revolutionary for me as I'm watching Netflix uh, in my old age. Uh, but it's other aspects as well. Maybe mobility issues will come to play. And we see devices that were originally meant for that, like the Segway scooter is a perfect example of that. Um, the creation of the Segway was preceded by the creation of a uh, essentially a, 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 a wheelchair that allowed you to go up and down stairs, that allowed the uh, user to be elevated to the same height as uh, someone who was standing in front of them. That technology got added to the Segway scooter, which the rest of us kind of rolled our eyes at. We didn't think we needed something like that. But now your kids got a hoverboard. If it wasn't for the Segway uh, vehicles that came before it, your kid wouldn't have fun with one of those you know, wacky Back to the Future style uh, hoverboard devices because of the necessary components. So this is the type of thing where we have to step back and realize that while a lot of this technology is fun for those who are walking freely day to day and feel that they've got not a care in the world, a lot of the technologies that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis are expressly because they were first designed for those who had specific disabilities. You know, I'd argue that the hoverboard, by the way, still isn't the hoverboard they promised us in uh, <laughs> the future. But that's a, that's a story for another day entirely. Um, I don't know if you paid attention, but the question of the day today, I think, ties in perfectly. And I got to ask it to you before we let you go, which is, if you could teleport to any fictional tech-inspired world, like the Matrix, Star Trek, Wakanda, what would it be and why? All right, so then I have a question for you. When you say, you know, teleport to this tech inspire world, do I have to stay there? Can I can I come back to the present day where we are right now? You can come back. Yeah, you can come back for sure. It's just a, okay. a short visit or as long as you want. So then um the short visit would be Star Wars, that universe. Okay. But if I was stranded permanently in a tech inspired alternate fictional universe, it would have to be Star Trek. Um, I love Star Wars for the grit and the grime and, and that, that real lived-in feel, but Star Trek is that utopian vision that we kind of all want. They don't have money. They don't have the problems that we have of the, the present day. And if I had to stay in a fictional future, I think I would like Star Trek with only one exception. I would never in a million years allow them to teleport me anywhere because I don't know how you feel about it, but as far as I'm concerned, the Star Trek teleport device, that's a suicide machine. We're going to dismantle you, take you apart, and put you somewhere else and put you back together. Yeah, you put a version of me back together, but me, myself, it's, I'm going to fade to black and I'm never going to wake up again. So uh, I'm with bones on this. Dr. McCoy <laughs> doesn't believe in uh, teleporters. Neither do I. Michael Hainsworth, if people want to follow you, uh, check out your web seekers. Where can they do that? Uh, I am on all the major social media uh, platforms as Hainsworth TV. Uh, I'm on the threads, which I'm trying to build up because I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk's Nazi bar. I'm also on LinkedIn if you want to talk about something on a professional basis as well. Michael Hansworth, thank you so much for joining us. Can't wait to have you back on again. Coming up, we're going to wrap things up. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, coming up, we're going to wrap things up with the answers uh, to your answers to the question of the day. Michael, thank you for being with us. We'll be back in a moment here on Access Tech Live.
There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.